So what we need to do now is we actually need to hook up your devices to the computers in front of you. Yours is already hooked up. For the rest of you, what you have is, and give a shout if you don't have all of these things, as I was handing this out in a hurry. Um, you should have a monitor cable. You know it's going to have a, oh, and you guys don't have anything, and I know. So watch and pay attention in case you have to do this at some later point. But I need to forward the demo for now, and then I'll bring it back. Um, so you're going to have a monitor cable. What you need to do is pick out one of the monitors in front of you. So obviously, you have two computers at each table. You're only going to need one of them. And you need to unplug the monitor cable that's currently plugged into it. It will be the white cable in the back. And please do do this somewhat gently. Um, you need to unscrew and unplug that white cable in the back and plug this monitor cable in instead. In addition, you're going to have a power adapter that looks like this. There's power strips on the back side of all your tables. So either nicely ask the people in front of you to plug this in for you or walk around your table and plug this into the power strip. Into this, you're going to need to plug your USB cable. So USB cable plugs into the power adapter. Don't go ahead and plug in the other end yet because that'll power up the board and it's nice to wait till everything else is connected before you do that. The final thing you need to do is connect the mouse and keyboard. So this is the mildly tricky part. I'm happy to help. I meant to do this before you all got here and I didn't knock around to it. Uh, plugged into the back of the computer, whatever computer you're using the monitor for, on the back side of it, the keyboard and mouse are currently plugged in. If you unplug them from the desktop and plug them into the two little ports on the side of the monitor here, and then the monitor has its own USB cable that you can plug into the PC Duino. So I will walk around and help, but try to follow those general directions. All right, guys and girls, so now everyone should be looking at a screen that looks like this. Um, this is the screen you get the first time you boot a board, if you're using the older version of the board. So, But if you don't get this screen automatically when you boot up, you can always get back to this screen by opening a terminal and running board config, B-O-A-R-D dash C-O-N-F-I-G dot S-H, and it launches this program. So what this program is, is essentially, this is just kind of a, a lot of the low level configuration for the board. You normally set this up once and then you never need to worry about it again. But because most of you are using brand new boards, we do in fact need to set this up once and then we won't have to worry about it again. So in here there's a number of things. We can do things like set the screen resolution. We can set you know, the percent of the screen that's being used. Uh, set the locale, so this is language and stuff, time zone, keyboard, tell it whether we want it to boot to a desktop or we want it to boot to the command line. All of these kind of low-level things can be done inside here. So the things we want to worry about, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set the screen resolution. So if you click on that, you should be presented with a screen like this. I'm going to do it differently because I'm on the projector, but all of you guys are going to want to set it to 1920 by 1080. So if you just scroll down to here and hit enter, you're going to get the screen resolution will change. I'm going to see if I can get out of it. Uh, and I'm going to break everything. Uh, so you're going to want the 1920 by the one that says 60 next to it. So that's at 60 hertz. Um, so that's basically just the resolution of these monitors. Um, once I get mine back, okay, cool. So if you change the screen resolution, you should get presented with a little thing that says, are you sure? You're going to want to type a Y and hit enter, and then you should get back to this. Are we good? All right. If someone gets held up, I'll walk around and we're done with this too. But so at this point, you should have not the one I have selected, but that one selected. Um, next thing you want to do is change the window percent. So yours is probably set on 98. Same deal. Just scroll up to 100, hit enter, uh, and that should change it. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So if you set it at 100, I'll just if there's a little black line around the outside of your screen before it should be gone. Now yours is just the full screen. Um, Next thing we want to do is set the locale. This is probably, you know, this is a less big deal here. This, there's a symbol you feel like this on a Raspberry Pi, and you do have to do this because it's all in British English, meaning the symbols on the keyboard are all wrong. Um, but if you select English, it's going to ask if you want to remove other languages. Your call on whether you ever want to switch it back to Chinese. But if you don't, just say yes, and then you'll remove the Chinese language files on there. Um, then we want to go ahead and set the time zone. So I assume you guys can all figure out what time zone we're in. But if you go to US and select mountain, and then it'll take it a second, and it should pop back to the main menu. Okay. We then want to go ahead and set the keyboard. 
So the keyboard you generally want is just the 104 key, generic 104 key PC. There's also an international version, but this has slightly different, it can have slightly different characters on the keyboard, so I normally just use the non-international version. If you select that, it's going to ask you what language layout you want US, you still want US. It's going to ask you a series of questions about various things. You can just stick with the defaults, they're all fine, so no compose key, uh, and then just note here is all fine. So if you hit that, it should take you back to the main screen. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do here, we actually don't need to change this because it's set by default, but if you go to set boot, it'll ask you whether you want to boot to the desktop or whether you want to boot to the command line. You know, you may be in a situation where you just want to boot to the command line because you don't need a desktop and it's just going to be running some sensor in the background that's uploading data to the web, right? But for our purposes, we want it to boot to the desktop. That's probably what it was already set on. There are a few other options here that, you know, we're not going to get too far into. Um, you can run the update from here. It's not going to work right now because we haven't connected your boards to the Wi-Fi yet, so it wouldn't do you any good to run that. Uh, you can also make a backup of essentially the card, or you can copy what's in the flash memory. If you have like a camera card, you can stick it in and make a copy of everything to that card to use later. But all we want to do is go down to Done. You're actually going to have to hit Tab. So if you hit Tab, you'll get down to OK and Done. Scroll over to Done, hit Done, and it should exit this and continue booting. You, when you have done, you're going to get back to that black screen. Yeah. Oh. So this didn't happen to me, but it's probably going to happen to you guys. It might ask you, it's going to try to auto-remove some files, and you're going to get a prompt, do you want to do this, yes, no. Just hit yes and hit enter. This is probably going to take a minute or two for you guys, um, and you may get that prompt twice. So if you get prompted for anything, give it a yes, hit enter, and let it keep going. So when you, all is said and done, you guys should get to a screen that looks like this. I think we're still waiting on a few people. Not everyone. Raise your hand if you're not on this screen. Okay. We'll give it a few more minutes. If you do happen to get on this screen, feel free to start clicking on things. You know, you can explore a little bit. Bear in mind, what you are dealing with here is not a full-blown laptop. So it's not going to be super fast, but it should, you know, if you wait a moment, it's like pretend you're on Windows 95. <laughs> if you guys are waiting, you can actually go ahead and connect your accessory board. So, if you haven't done it already, now, when you do this, be gentle. Really, you should shut it down before doing this if you're going to be extra careful. Um, you might inadvertently reboot it while doing this, so hopefully it doesn't happen to you. Um, so go ahead and take out the main shield board here. If you look carefully, it should only fit on in one direction. You know, don't force it if it doesn't fit. But if you carefully kind of position this over the pins on your board and just kind of push it in with a steady force, um, you should be good. So if you've made it to this screen, I know some of you haven't yet, but if you've made it to this screen, you may want to connect it to the Wi-Fi. So there is a little Wi-Fi signal down here in the corner. If you click on that, it should be pretty self-explanatory. Select CU Wireless. Uh, you are likely going to get the fun little CU Wireless if you go then open up Chrome. So Chromium is Google Chrome with Google's branding stripped out, so it's you know it's a Google Chrome web browser. So if you connect to the Wi-Fi and open this up, you probably will hit the campus firewall that's going to want you to give it your identity and all that jazz. Um, feel free to, if you want to avoid that, you could also just connect to the guest Wi-Fi instead. Um, but once you do all of that, you should have regular internet access and you should be good to go. And your guys should already be seen. Yeah, it's like earlier. You're on this. Alright guys, so if you've connected to the Wi-Fi, great. The stuff we're doing is not actually going to require you to be connected, but um, it might not be a bad idea should you actually, I lie, you are going to need to be connected. So make sure you're connected to the Wi-Fi, open up a web browser and make sure you can get to a web page. Either give it your identity key or sign into the guest wireless. Um, but we are going to need to install a piece of software here in a second which is going to require internet access. All right, is everyone connected to the internet? I'm on the desktop, life is good for most of you. Okay.